What's up, meatheads? Welcome to this week's edition of Meathead Minutes. Sorry about the delay. I've been busy on the inpatient medicine service this week, so I haven't had much time to put much together, but it led me to a good topic, which is stress and fatigue. I've certainly experienced my share of both of those this week. Uh, so before we get into it, we gotta define the terms. Stress is any force applied to an organism that results in a disruption of homeostasis and fatigue is the accumulation of stressors over time. Um, those are very broad definitions and not in too much depth, but those are the basic ways to understand it. Now, I know I use some big words in there. Disruption of homeostasis just means that your physiology is being pushed out of its comfort zone. Now, some of these stressors can be beneficial. The stress that we put on our muscles during training results in hypertrophy and it results in a strength gain. The stress that we put on our CNS during training results in neurologic adaptations and recruitment of more motor units. The stress that we put on our bones with our muscles results in an increase in bone density. And the stress that we put on ourselves mentally in academics definitely helps us result in what I like to call knowledge hypertrophy as you gain more of a grasp of different types of information and become more adept at dealing with stressful situations. Now, those all fall in the realm of what we call eustress. Stress comes on a curve, so you can think about a curve of stress going up and down in a bell, where before you get to eustress, you have a lack of stress, where it's not enough to cause any type of adaptation or any performance benefit. And you can think of that as not training enough or not studying enough to get to the point where you're gonna have any meaningful change. Um, it can also be thought of as not really giving a shit coming into a competition where you're not gonna have the same type of performance because you don't have that hype. You stress is that hype range. You stress is the proper amount of neurologic stress, muscle stress, etc., that causes you to grow, that causes you to get better. And then we go into the realm of distress when we have exceeded our, I'll use a Mike Isretel term here, maximum recoverable volume. Now, that maximum recoverable volume goes across all things and all forms of stressors contribute to that. So, your body doesn't really know the difference between the types of stressors that it's experiencing. Whether it's physiologic stress or psychological stress, those are still stressors on your body and both of those will cause your body to activate the sympathetic nervous system and release cortisol. And it is this release of cortisol that becomes especially problematic because as we know, cortisol is great in stressful situations, but over the long term, it can cause some pretty maladaptive things to happen. It's catabolic, it can cause water retention, um, it can make it difficult to lose body fat, um, it can make you more insulin resistant. There's actually specific syndromes in medicine that we get very concerned about in patients who have very high cortisol for a long time. Um, so cortisol is not the best thing in the world. We do not want high levels of cortisol surging through our system at all times. Um, this is why stress management is so important. Uh, when you can't manage your stress and your cortisol gets too high, you start to enter the fatigue range. And once again, fatigue goes across all things. You can have muscular fatigue, you can have joint fatigue. Most importantly, you can have systemic fatigue. And that's what's often talked about as CNS fatigue, even though we know that doesn't exist. But as this fatigue accumulates um, and your systemic fatigue gets higher, you're gonna suffer in your workouts, you're gonna suffer in your work, and overall, you're gonna need to figure out a way to decrease your stress level so your systemic fatigue doesn't get so high. Um, sleep is a very important way to do this, and we can get into recovery modalities another time, but the most important thing is knowing when you're reaching these points of fatigue. If you're working 80 hours in a week, and you're not sleeping more than six hours a night, and you are trying to train two hours a day, your systemic fatigue is gonna rack up. That's what I did this week, and by the time I got to the end of the week in my training sessions, they were garbage. Uh, my grip strength was completely shot even though I wasn't training grip, which is often a great indicator of systemic fatigue. If your grip's not working, your fatigue is very high. 
Um, I can go into a lot more depth on this and many people smarter than me have. Um, I plan to put together a little article on this later uh, with some more information about fatigue, recovery, and stress. But just remember that your body can only handle so much at once and stressors come in all forms. So don't think that just because you feel like you're sleeping well and you're recovering well from that standpoint, that the stressors bleeding over from your work, your marriage, your kids, whatever, are not affecting you in the gym. When your stress gets too high, your performance is gonna decline, you're gonna get sick, and you're gonna have problems. Um, that kinda does it for this week. I don't wanna keep you guys too long. Uh, I know I'm rambling a little bit. I need to get some sleep, but uh, stay strong and healthy, and I will see you on the next one.